push yourself like, I don't know, 10%. Uh, yeah. Slow it down. Wow. It's still hot in there. Wow, it is burning. Dude, the turbo intake is red hot. Okay. Uh, sorry, the, the turbo itself is red hot. Yeah. So I don't really like to have flame going like this. What do you want to do? Uh, so I can blow it out, but it will smoke a lot. How much? Well, show me. Yes, I can't blow it out. That's wood gas. Time to miss a little bit of water in the intake. No. Let's see if it. Yeah, it's, well, it's gonna happen again, huh? There's, I, I mean, this is an can, interesting new failure mode. Yeah, I mean, we could keep running it. I'm not worried about the oil pressure. Yeah? There we go. That's a little better. that entire bucket of water to that temperature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, shit, man. Mm -hmm. Nah, it's gonna recombust. It's hot enough to get yeah. started back up. Mm -hmm. Seriously, I mean...
Look, yeah, bud. What's up guys, quick recap on the turbo furnace and what happened in this video. Um, basically this, first off, this thing was super scary to stand next to while it was running. Um, it was really loud, it was really hot, it was really gnarly. I had tons of adrenaline going through my body. Um, so one thing I want to have on there next time uh, is some way to throttle it without standing, standing right next to it. Uh, so I did buy a 102 millimeter automotive throttle body off of eBay for like 50 bucks. Um, so we're going to figure out some way to get that going on there and basically probably run it with either a throttle cable uh, with like a twist grip or something like that or I might just put an RC servo on it so I can run it with an RC controller. That might be kind of cool. Um, basically anything so I just don't have to stand right next to that thing while it's running because it is super scary. Uh, the other thing that's not great about it is that we presently have to have a vacuum cleaner to start it uh, and that has to be powered by wall power basically. Um, and that's not great because we all live in the city here and we have to do this in alleyways or backyards and like make our neighbors mad or whatever and there's no way we can do this in the middle of nowhere uh, so we've got to figure out some way to start it with ba battery power. Uh, so a little bit about this run, basically what you saw was the pressure gauge there in the video for a little while. It did hit 15 psi a couple of times. That was pretty cool and pretty scary to be honest. Uh, but after the first couple minutes, what we did find was that it didn't ever develop any boost pressure after that. Um, and we think this was because at the beginning, uh, basically a significant amount of the energy that the turbo furnace was producing was being absorbed by the relatively cool mass of the steel parts that it was made of, like the, tur the turbo housing and the burn chamber itself. Um, and once those parts were hot, there was basically no load on the turbo furnace, and so there was no way uh, that it could develop any kind of chamber pressure uh, without overspeeding. And this is kind of the same thing you'll see with cars, uh, where you can't really develop any boost in neutral. you got to like really put it in gear, like third gear or something, and be ripping down the highway to develop a significant amount of boost pressure. Uh, and I just definitely didn't want to have that thing over speeding or take any chances because I was standing right next to it and if it like kind of catastrophically disassembled itself that could be pretty pretty bad for everybody involved. Um, so the, definitely the main thing that we got to figure out next time is how to put a load on the turbo furnace. Um, I got a lot of crazy ideas on how to do that and I did just buy a TIG welder so I'm going to be getting familiar with that over the next couple of weeks. Um, and I've been reading a lot about steam locomotives and jet engine and rocket engine nozzles, so we'll just kind of see what happens. Anyway, until next time, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Ciao.